Hello, my name's Bob Willis, and welcome to Defect of the Month, uh, brought to you by the NPL Defect Database. Now, the NPL Defect Database is basically a collection of photographs of different types of defects that uh, we've seen in the industry, and we try to give you examples or reasons why particular defects have occurred, and hopefully some corrective action. It's been running for a th few years now, and we're always interested in people adding more material to the defect database. Now, the use of conductive materials uh, for traditional technology and high temperature technology has advanced over the last few years and there are a lot of materials available in the industry. Now the assembly process generally speaking is fairly straightforward. We print, uh, we place, uh, we cure rather than reflow but uh, one of the things that makes inspection a little bit more difficult is the conductive materials do not reflow in a traditional way. We're curing it so the material required, the quantity of material, and the way it interfaces with the terminations on the components can be different. So different inspection requirements need to be considered. Not in terms of equipment, it's just what our perception is of a good solder joint. Doing shear force measurements is a good way of understanding whether the degree of cure has been done correctly, and that's something you, could, you can consider. But interfacing some of these materials uh, with tin terminations can be a problem from a reliability point of view in terms of resistance value, but also mechanical. Um, if, for instance, uh, the interface uh, is uh, brought above a certain temperature, then certainly the bond will be much poorer. So evaluate the materials, also consider the cost, because they are expensive, and many of the materials have to be stored at very low temperature before you use them.